Hey there. Just wanted to show a little fun project I've been working on. I uh, have a bunch of 2510s here that have blown displays and uh, stolen synthesizer boards, and they were basically used as parts radios. So all I've got is an RF deck and uh, a faceplate and the buttons and things like that. I need a new display module and uh, a new synthesizer board. In some cases, the finals are all gone, you know. So I thought I'd do something to this pile of radios, and uh, the first thing that came to mind would be to uh, replace the synthesizer board with uh, an Arduino Mega 2560 compatible board, or at least with a Uno pinout for shields and stuff. There's enough room inside the radio, I think, to uh, to mount one shield on top of a, a micro. But uh, hopefully make a custom board and things like that. And I've replaced the rotary encoder with one that punches in. It's got a push button for a menu select or whatever you want to use it for. And uh, you can see the numbers are about the same size as the factory display. Maybe a touch smaller, but they're a lot easier to read. Much higher contrast. And uh, two lines instead of a single line. And uh, I've just got hash marks in here for the faux meter at the moment. But, um, you know, it's a full matrix display, so I can, uh, I can program in uh, a couple of custom characters so I can get a full bar graph meter across there. And, uh, some things like that. This is just a mock-up, of course. I'm making sure that all the parts fit that I've purchased for these radios. You wouldn't believe how hard it is to find an LCD screen that will fit inside the 2510's uh, viewing window there. I found one out of hundreds. So that was probably the trickiest part of all. And, uh... You know, the, uh, the other thing is, if I'm building a full synthesizer, I need to actually synthesize something, so... I grabbed a SparkFun uh, direct synthesis board here, but uh, unfortunately it only goes to 25 megahertz. I guess I misread the specs. I thought it went to 50, but it doesn't, so I'm going to have to get a different uh, chip, a little bit different one. There's a, an 809850 chip that goes up to about 40 megahertz or so. Um, but that right there can replace, well, let's look at the original board. You know, here you've got the original board. This one chip here on this 9835 or 9850 will replace, you've got this whole, this is the synthesizer part of the board. And the 9850 will replace pretty much that right there. So I still need a 10.7 IF down here. But uh, pretty much that is replaceable with a single chip these days. And, a, and an amp. Needs an op amp. This beast over here, uh, this is a Hitachi. Uh, Micro uh, controller, microcomputer, they call it MCU. This has uh, got a mask ROM on it, so it's those little holes there, I believe, are uh, where they uh, burn the uh, firmware into the thing or something. And uh, it's permanently programmed. Uniden's got a custom part number on it, but it's, it's just an off the shelf part. And uh, all these connectors. My goal is to simply be able to unplug this board and plug a replacement in. So all these connectors are readily available. So that's not a big deal. I'll have to figure out the coaxial connectors like uh, J312 there. I'm not sure where to buy those, but I suspect that's not a problem either. You know, regulators, old standard stuff. So, 
this board in itself shouldn't be too difficult to replace. And uh, just for prototyping, before I go and etch, have boards manufactured and things like that, I've got uh, one over here that I've... There's the uh, original micro synthesizer board. I'm going to pull that chip out and leave the rest of the board as is, just for prototype. And uh, I cut the deck out of another synthesizer board and made it fit into here so I can mount uh, a Mega 2560 just for prototyping. So this header right here, there's enough pins to uh, plug into all the pin holes here and uh, then write some firmware. Most of the pins on here are uh, buttons, the faceplate buttons and you know things like that. <clears throat> Various signals coming off the RF deck, nothing terribly difficult to replicate. And uh, there's enough pins on this one header here that's unique to the Mega. And this is actually an Android version of the Mega. But uh, the nice thing about the Mega is you can put an UNO shield on here and you don't need to touch these pins. So the UNO shield will go on these four headers here. And, uh, you know, you might think, well, what am I going to do with that? But let's say, um, let's say you might want to want this radio to talk to uh, icons. Here is a uh, ICOM CI5 router that I've gotten from uh, Jim Michener. You know, plug that right onto the uh, micro here. And, uh, you know, once this is all said and done. This will probably fit, just fit, inside the chassis. There's lots of other things you could do. I think it'd be neat just to have uh, a synthesizer board with Arduino headers on it for uh, peripherals. Plus you've got all these extra serial ports on the Mega. Get three pairs of serial ports, and you've got uh, an additional eight analog inputs. So, you know, leaves a bunch of possibilities open. But uh, it would be nice to uh, fiddle with this. This is a radio I know really well, so I'm kind of fiddling with it first. I've got a, uh, another rotary encoder here. It's the same as this, except it has a shorter shaft, 15 millimeter shaft, for the mode switch and the uh, RIT control. So these two will be replaced with rotary encoders. That way the RIT control could be used as a full sub VFO. You could have like dual watch. You could, you know, monitor a call frequency on 10 meters and 12 meters simultaneously, for example. or alternately, as it were, similar to the way the chip switch did back in the day. So, not a whole lot going on there, but, uh, you know, these direct synthesis chips are cheap. And, uh, I just need a little bit of an amplifier and, you know, some other circuitry, and that's about it. I've got this test jig if you want to call it that. It's a mess of wires connected into the uh, into a uh, Arduino Nano which uh, doesn't have nearly enough I.O. lines to run the whole radio but it's got enough to run the synthesizer and the uh, display and the rotary encoder and that's really about it. At that point I'm out of I.O. lines. So Anyway, neat little demo. If you can come up with any uh, features you'd like to see in a 2510, uh, you know, put them in the comments or something. Uh, obviously, I've stolen the buttons from a Lincoln here. A bunch of the radios I have are Lincolns, or what's left of them, anyway. Uh, 
missing the panel over here that's attached to the radio still. It doesn't unplug, so it's pretty much married over here in this ball of wire. And, uh, yeah, pretty fun. Be neat to see if I can make it work at all. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.